So Rico, there's been a lot of sneaker gods in our they have in our in our uh, generation pretty much. Would we consider Kanye West a, a sneaker god? If you would just do the honors. I just told you who I thought I was. A god. <sighs> I I think it's safe to say he's up there. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to Sneaker Web. And today we're doing things a little differently. We are introducing a new series for you guys. Not only do we do the performance aspect and the unboxing for you guys, but now we are getting into sneaker history. <laughs> and the series is gonna be called Sneaker Vault. Mm -hmm. And this is the first season, first episode, which is talking about Yeezys and how they've basically been a part of the sneaker culture and has changed some aspects and is also represented one of the biggest icons in pop culture today. Agreed. Uh, Kanye West has probably been one of the biggest artists of our time. Um, he was also one of the first artists to get a collab mm -hmm. with a major company, mm -hmm. which is also a big deal. It I is mean, a big considering, deal. Considering, you know, who he was and who he is now and who he is now and that started back in 2009 with nike correct i want to say probably about 2007 2007 um i think the first idea of the air yeezy one came when him and mark smith mm -hmm. were you know working together and yeezy you know basically always had these ideas of rendering a shoe mm -hmm. now keep in mind he did do a collab with babestas um or the babe stud for Yeezy yeah. um, prior to Nike. Mm -hmm. And I guess that got a lot of attention because of the hype that surrounded that shoe. Yep. Um, so I guess he got with Mark and they made a lot of silhouettes. Um, little by little, a lot of people started getting news about mm -hmm. the Yeezy. But you are right, the Yeezy did not officially come out until around 2009. Yes, which is the Nike Yeezy one, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. And mind you, Kanye West has openly admitted this. He is a big fan of Jordan brand and obviously wears it no matter what contract he signs. Correct. And uh, that inspired the Nike Yeezy one. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Nike Air Yeezy one or something. Yeah, something along those. Yeah. And, you know, that's what went into the design language, but unfortunately, Nike uh, gave him restrictive, uh, creative, you know, yeah. opportunities, and he couldn't use some of the moldings that he would like, so uh, he ended up using some of the Flight 89 midsoles, he used a tennis shoe, which is, I believe, the Nike Tech Challenge 2, um, he used that midsole as well for the Nike Air Yeezy 2. And uh, that's what just started this whole uh, Nike Easy business. The crazy part is that he took a lot of materials or ideas yep. from one up until the six. Mm -hmm. um, since he's a huge fan of Jordan, but you're right, he didn't. He had a lot of restrictions. Um, there wasn't much playing room mm -hmm. for him to do at the time, but he was able to kind of skate around that. Yeah. Like generally the cement design on the Jordan 3s. Mm -hmm. um, he was able to take those and turn it into little Ys mm -hmm. and put it into design on the upper for the Air Yeezy 1. No, not the cement, the elephant. Elephant, elephant print, print, I'm sorry. Not the cement print, but the elephant print. Yes. And he was able to get that put into, and if you look really closely, it was just a bunch of little Ys. Mm -hmm. um, he even took the glow-in-the-dark bottom. Mm -hmm. um, he originally wanted to do a uh, full light-up bottom. A full LED bottom LED from bottom. the MAG-inspired. Right, and Nike obviously said, that's too much money, <laughs> and we're not gonna do it, so. We're capping you. We're, we're capping you at whatever we're gonna cap you at, and so he basically took an alternative and went for the glow-in-the-dark bottoms. Yep. And the last thing that I thought was really important was that um, he wanted to somehow implement, uh, when you saw the original design for the Air Yeezy 1, mm -hmm. instead of there being an air bubble spot like mm -hmm. right there, there was initially like a circular yes. like part there. Uh, essentially um, a hole. Yeah. And Nike was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, this is not what we do. We are not giving that to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, he decided to put the uh, lace up mm -hmm. portion and then just put a giant Y in the middle and it kind of gave it that bubble feature. Yep. So it just really really made it surprising to me how much design wise and how much the little things that i didn't notice mm -hmm. even when i saw kanye rocking these for the very first time yes um which he did end up teasing in his concerts and uh you know he would publicly wear them out and obviously people started to take pictures and take notice and just wondered 
when these were going to release and obviously build some of the hype, which in my opinion, which is around the same time where sneaker culture slightly started to shift yeah, um, into more of a hype beast culture. You know, we had the Yeezys, the Pigeons back then, which oh, yeah. the Pigeon staples we'll talk about in a whole separate video that deserves uh, a whole video for itself. But yes, um, with him giving uh, essentially that publicity, Nike wasn't going to say no and not yeah. going to release them, especially when... Uh, we're getting into the age of bots and hype beast and all that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, StockX and GOAT didn't exist back then. No. This was strictly just at the Nike market mm -hmm. or at whatever retailers were selling them at. And if you were able to get your hands on them, most of the time you would see people post them on eBay mm -hmm. or most people would sell locally or at local shops. Yep. And the culture was very different. Mm -hmm. um, he definitely put a lot of people on their toes. And the crazy part is, the initial release of the Yeezys originally mm -hmm. um, were limited to like 500 pairs, yes. I believe. <sighs> and a lot of people camped out. Some people camped out for weeks Yep. just to get in line for the Yeezys. And it really put a staple in and Nike started to take notice like, man, how can this one guy um, do so much mm -hmm. and, and bring this much traction? Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, man, Nike, you kind of fumbled the bag there. They, they, yes, they fumbled the bag a little bit, not giving um, creative uh, freedom or more creative freedom to Easy. That was a start. He didn't like that. Um, and then when after the Nike Air Easy Two, we get into the no, not after the night uh, during the Nike Air Easy Two, we get into this uh, third colorway that everybody was anticipating because. He was wearing the Platinum, mm -hmm. uh, Platinum Air Z2. He was wearing the Solar Reds, mm -hmm. and uh, which is uh, what these Kyries are actually inspired by. Um, so I've had um, some inspiration pulled from uh, Yeezy. I do admit that some of the designs and some of the colors that he uses are very iconic. But then we get into the quote unquote hidden third colorway, at least at the time. Everybody knows about them now, the uh, Red Octobers, of course. But what happened with those originally is that this was kind of at the end of Nike and Yeezy's uh, relationship. Yeah. And so uh, it was uh, it was just two people knocking heads and it, it really wasn't um, the best situation for Yeezy. He, he yeah. wanted to be a complete creative design. He actually was trying to get into fashion at the time. A lot of the times, I'm pretty sure he still is. And then the crazy part is he did... Um, in between the Yeezy 1 and 2, he did a full collab with um, Louis Vuitton. Yes. And, you know, at the time you saw the Louis Vuitton Dons, you mm -hmm. saw the low top Louis Vuitton, and then you saw like the mid level that he had a lot of creative inspiration in. And Nike basically didn't care yeah. that he was trying to find that that move and trying to find that way of having that creative freedom. The stuff mm -hmm. you see now with Adidas where he's able to max out on how many shoes he gets to put out and, and when and why, um, it's not, it didn't, like, that didn't transfer to Nike. Yeah. It was basically like, okay, we're gonna give you silhouettes, you pick between these silhouettes and we'll design them. That's basically what Nike wanted to keep yes. on that basis level. But knowing Kanye, you know, like he would say in, in his BBC interview, He's been drawing these Jordan silhouettes since he was a young kid. Yeah, you like know? before he could afford them, like yeah. in fourth grade. Yeah, and <clears throat> it's just crazy to think that, you know, a big company like Nike um, wouldn't support that. Now, he would have become one of the first artists to ever have their own royalties, too. Yeah. If Nike had granted that. Now, after he did threaten to stop working on Yeezys and stop and, and move somewhere else, Nike was basically trying to like muster up to him and say, hey, like, you know, we understand what we did. Yeah, like, let's, we're trying let's to make you, it right. Yeah, let's give you creative control. Let's give you more uh, more manpower, a bigger team. You know, do what you want. Design any Yeezy you want. And ultimately, it came down to, okay, well, what's the price? Yeah. And, you know, at the time, you know, Kanye's daughter North was being born mm -hmm. and he was very focused on his family and he yep. wanted to have things later in life that he would be able to call royalties and mm -hmm. once royalties came into play or margins of whatever was taken out of that payment came into play and essentially nike said no 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 because yeah. he wasn't a signature athlete because exactly. the person that got it before him the royalties and all that 
was Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. That was back in the 80s. Yeah. But um, yeah, essentially Nike just said, no, we can't give this to you or we won't give it to you. Um, and that's just kind of how that fell apart is and that Nike wasn't giving <laughs> what yeah. Ye wanted. <laughs> I was... mean, now when you bring him up to speed with the Yeezy 2, mm -hmm. um, the design for the Yeezy 2, I personally thought the Yeezy 2 was not my favorite. Design In my opinion, it was the best evolution of yeah. like the predecessors. Yeah. I mean, I, I can, I commend him a lot, honestly, mm -hmm. for sticking to the initial design and the initial colorway. Yeah and not changing too much about the shoe. Mm -hmm. I just felt like the first Yeezy was so iconic and it was so unmatched that I couldn't really like look at the Yeezy 2 the same way I looked at the Yeezy, until the Red October. So and so, <laughs> but. Which is kind of what we're alluding to here is kind of the, uh, the end of Yeezy mm -hmm. and um, Nike relationship. So it was um, 2011, right? Yeah. 2000. Okay. This was roughly after he had done his Louis Vuitton. Yes. Collab. So right after that, like I said, there was a hidden colorway going around, and everybody was wondering if it was going to come out because Yeezy and Nike were having this falling out. It wasn't working, and they were just wondering if this shoe was going to release. And quietly, Nike, after all of the disputes and all that, on Twitter, just sent one link. And within seconds, not even not even minutes, not yeah. even an hour, it was sold out, which was the Red Octobers. And those, um, I think between all three shoes, there are only, what, 7,000 pairs mm -hmm. between the three of them? Maybe less now. Maybe less. And uh, so you can only imagine why the resale market price of those are upwards of tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And uh, that's also one of the reasons why sneaker culture is somewhat of a hype beast now is yeah. because of what uh yeezy did back then with mm -hmm. limited pairs of quantity with uh supply and demand you know there's a limited demand a limited supply yeah. gonna be a huge demand yeah. you know vice versa and uh that's that's just what started the craze back then yeah so real quick i know there's way more to talk about with yeezys of course there is going to be a part two to this video and that one, we're gonna talk more about the Adidas Yeezy culture going forward and how he revolutionized more of the modern culture. Yeah. Um, you know, in this video, we talked about the start, but it's time to get into really what makes Yeezy a Yeezy today. And yeah. to give a quick shout out, and of course, the sponsor for this video, 3UP Prints, you guys are amazing, supplying the shirts for Sneaker Web. We are working on a, some apparel that is coming very soon. And also, I wanna give a Quick shout out to Too Lethal, made this shirt. Um, nice. Just uh, just an amazing work of art in my opinion. Uh, two legends that we lost uh, too soon in their time. And um, this embodies uh, everything that um, they represented in my opinion. And I just, uh, I just really mess with the brand that um, brings this kind of uh, creativity. And um, with that being said, Chris, Swing by next time and make sure that you guys like, subscribe, and you know, do all the uh, do all the supportive things that Sneaker Web much appreciates. And uh, catch us again when we uh, open up the vault to talk about some sneakers. See you later. Deuce. What was I gonna say again? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once the spotlight comes on, everything just goes to shit. I know. <laughs> oh, right. wait.